Well, uh, I think in one of your interviews, uh, you said that you you like women, but you're not gay. I feel like I I like spirits, right? Mm -hmm. So I like after being in the industry and shit, of course, coming at you in ten folds. I started dating women. It you is started dating it is. women. Yeah. So it's just what it is. So a full blown relationship. Yeah. So How's that? Technically, it's bi. I don't okay. like terms. I just fuck with what I fuck with. Okay. So what was it like? At what point did you start dating women? It was like after how did it feel? All okay. So you're an adult. By yeah, I was what? dating men all that. Shit. Till I was 23 years old. Were you just sick of men at one point? Just want to see what I else there like was? I feel like it was like the, the person I ended up dating knew was because all the stuff that was going on with my brother. And they was just closest thing to me and it turned to something else. And I feel like I kind of like just huh. needed somebody there. Okay. If that makes sense. You know? Yeah, of course. That's how it kind of happened. But beforehand, hell no. I would, I'll tell you, you know, on the stack of Bible, I was like, I ain't no bitches. Like, that's how I was. So what was different with the female relationship than a male relationship? Just the emotions. You know, yeah. nigga, weird y'all don't like to verbally express yourself that's true yeah okay women are all it's very <laughs> emotional and understanding you know you could be yourself and all this shit. it's like a more caring compassionate relationship did you guys break up eventually or yeah i don't talk to that person at all <laughs> what what was that like i mean to to break up with a female as opposed to a male honestly to be quite honest it was actually extremely cool to where it could have went. Like, it's just mm -hmm. like, this ain't working. And we just went our ways and just don't talk. I don't see this person, nothing. Okay. So these days, do you prefer men or women? In terms Whoever's of loyal to me. Doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Whoever's loyal okay. to me. Okay. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. 2020, who gives a f As long as I ain't f animal, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you said that Tupac was one of your biggest influences. Uh -huh. Uh, we've probably done more Tupac related interviews than than anybody. I'm pretty sure you have. Yeah. You ever see the Keefe D interview? Yeah. You watched the whole thing? Yeah. What'd you think? Teach his own. You know. I mean, before then, did you think that it was a whole conspiracy to kill Tupac or, you know, the government did it or Suge did it or, you know, all these I'm kind so of... weird. I still don't think they're dead. That's just me. You think he's still alive? I don't know. I just do. He he's he's really dead. I mean, I, I know his close friends. Like, no, nah, I feel you. I just <laughs> that's just my own perspective. I'm like, this yeah, the well, Machiavelli affiliation, all this shit, like all this. Shit. Just me being an intellectual individual, just putting hell of shit together in my own mind. I'm like, this motherfucker was smarter than y'all think. Well, let me put it like this, and this comes from people that really were super, super close to him. They said, if you think that Tupac, with his personality, could lay low <laughs> for. 25 years, <laughs> as big as his personality is. I feel like he was fed up. That was just my personality. That's my personal perspective on it. I feel like he was fed up with the business. Well, He or, didn't want to do it no more. And well, that was like an exit route. That's just me. Yeah. I had a whole, uh, it's crazy. I had a whole argument with my uncle at like six years old. Like, and I think about it now, like, why would you argue with a six year old? He's like, come on, he did. I'm like, yeah, he did. I'm six years old arguing with this. Or, or maybe he went in and put hands on someone who was known to shoot people. Who was already being investigated for multiple murders, and these guys were, you know, from a rival set with the dudes that he was rolling with, and they ran into him in the street and shot up their car from front to back. I never disputed that he got shot. Now, did he survive the shooting? That's the question. Because I just seen the interview when Shook said the nigga then got when they, the, the ambulance came, the sitting there smoking in Newport. So I'm like, that don't sound like a nigga that's about to die when he go to the hospital. Well, I mean, I interviewed. You ain't smoking in Newport if you just got shot. You about to die, right? Well, I interviewed the first responder, the cop that actually showed up at the scene, and that was a very different story. He was not smoking in Newport. He was covered in blood. He actually said, fuck you to the cop with his last words that he ever spoke, because the cop was trying to figure out, was trying to get him to like confess to who shot him. He told the cop, fuck you. And I looked at him once again. I said, what happened? Who did this? Who shot you? And now he's looking at me, so we're looking at each other in the eyes. And this is kind of the first time he's even acknowledging my presence. And... Uh, he looked at me and I could tell he was, you know, he was getting a breath together to tell me. And he looked me right in the eyes and we looked at each other and he said, fuck you. And he said it just like that with an emphasis on that F to, you know, to really let me know. Uh, that's how we felt. So. Doesn't that seem a little fabricated to you? Not really. That's what it sounded like to me. It sounded like you're trying to make him sound more aggressive than he is. Listen, yeah, he was I, not... His last words was fuck me. <laughs> like, I don't know. That's how I look at you. 
All right. Teach his own. Listen, I, I, I'm not going to take your conspiracy theories away from you if you feel he's still alive. Like, it's just me. Like, I feel like people try to make him into like this bad guy. Like, that was his last words. Fuck you, cop. Like, <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> that doesn't sound crazy to you now that you say it out loud. It sounds crazy. Well, I mean, considering that he shot two cops in the South at one but that point, was defending that he he hated he hated the police as a whole. His his mother was a Black Panther, and, and he saw his family brutalized by the police his whole life. He'd been beat up really badly by the police. I know about the OPD all that, but does that mean that every time you see a police officer, you're gonna say "fuck you"? Uh, I just told yeah, you my own instances pr- much, with the yeah. police. <laughs> I'm not out here saying "fuck the police" every time I see the police. Yeah, I don't think you've had the same experience as Tupac, though. I've had my own fair share of incidents. I, I actually went to jail before all this when I was 15 years old. I got slammed onto a car and then I was resisting arrest. I've had my own incidents with the okay. police. I don't feel like fuck the police. I feel like fuck that individual officer. Yeah. My fuck it, you are a grown ass man slamming me on the hood of a hot ass police car. Yeah, I feel you. But does that, that mean make me a fucking monster towards the police? Nah. Some people just dickheads, man. Yeah. <laughs>